Two Kids and a Career is a production of Jill Divine Media. I am so blessed and grateful for my children. But for me to be the best mom and the best version of myself, I have to have something else, my career, yeah. to fill me up. Yes, I completely agree. I think stay-at-home moms are superheroes. <laughs> yes. Um, but I, I, I feel the same as you. I, I really like having something that I can focus on for myself. Um, and then also get that time with my daughter that I need. Two Kids in a Career is brought to you by Blondin Real Estate. They're a family-owned boutique-style brokerage with over 40 years of experience serving the counties that surround St. Louis. See the properties they have to offer at BlondinRealEstate.com. That's BlondinRealEstate.com. Hi there, and welcome to Two Kids in a Career. I'm Jill Devine. As an entrepreneur, wife, and mama, the daily grind of trying to build a business while taking care of kids and trying to maintain a healthy connection with my hubby, it's a lot. With this podcast, you're going to hear candid conversations with other moms, parenting experts who can share their knowledge and insight, or you'll just hear me rambling to get it all out. There's going to be tears, there's going to be laughter, but most importantly, there will be support. Take a listen and connect with me so we can grow and learn from one another. This is Two Kids and a Career. Welcome to episode 53 of the podcast. I'm Jill Devine and the Supermom Shoutout. Make sure you are listening until the very end of this episode to find out who this week's Supermom is going to be. And that's also the time that I'll give you all the details on what you need to do to submit that wonderful Supermom in your life. So episode 53 is going to continue that theme that I started with the launch of season four, episode 44, happy hour and coffee date conversations. And how that was inspired was through my guest with episode 44, Cabinet Howard. What happened was if you didn't get a chance to listen to that episode yet, she sent me a message through Instagram at Jill Devine and just really honestly said, hey, I enjoy your podcast. I'm a mom. I have two kids. I work. And I thought it'd be fun to just talk. And I thought, well, that would be fun to just talk. So that kind of set the tone for season four. So that leads to this week's guests. Kelly Johnson did exactly what Cabany did. She heard episode 46 with Emily Martinez, also known as Emmy Lou Styles, and she reached out. She sent me an email told me that she was a female entrepreneur, small business owner, mama to a daughter who is about the same age as my youngest daughter, and thought it'd be great to talk and talk about her business and talk about juggling it all. So I said, of course, come on this podcast. But I will be completely honest, the way that she hooked me is because she's speaking my love language. So she is the owner of Organized Interiors. And I know that organization is not an official love language, but it is one of my love languages. So I definitely had to have you on, Kelly. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. So I actually had the opportunity to meet Kelly. Kelly has this amazing company that she formed, and we're going to talk about that. And so she came over to my house to talk about what she can do. And, and then it just, it made sense for me to have her on the podcast because I was like, well, she is a small business owner. She's a female entrepreneur. She has a daughter the same age as my youngest. And she left the corporate world to balance things with having a child. So it totally makes sense to have you on and uh, definitely going to talk about your business and motherhood. But let's back it up and start with when you were listening to Emily's episode, what made you want to say, hey, I, I want to email Jill? Yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed that episode. It was so great hearing more about Emily's um, profession and her business and everything. Um, so I just wanted to reach out. I I love chatting about organizing. I love the thought of women supporting other women um, and especially small business owners. I'm glad you brought up women supporting women because 
it's another theme that I think has been talked a lot about in season four. Just the last episode, 52, was with a woman by the name of Christine. And we talked a little bit more in depth about women supporting women and how at one point, and it still continues, somewhere, somehow, it was put into our minds that we shouldn't support one another, that it was a jealousy kind of thing. You you didn't want another woman to succeed. You wanted to to own whatever it was that you had. And I, I think that that just goes with competition and that's starting to change and shift. And the one thing that I had brought up with Christine in episode 52 was I had to learn, even with this podcast, that so many times I... I can give up if I want because there are millions of podcasts, but there are not millions of Jill Devine. There are not millions of Kelly Johnson. Maybe there are a lot of organizational businesses that exist out there, but there's something unique and different about you, Kelly. There's something unique and different about me. And being able to offer choices to everyone is key because, listen, sometimes Somebody might not connect with you, but maybe you know somebody else that they would connect with and it all works out and you just keep referring one another and everybody wins. Exactly. Um, And I am actually part of an organization in St. Louis. um, Well, it's called NAPO, the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals, and they have a St. Louis chapter. And that is what I have come to find with meeting so many amazing women um, in that organization and everyone being just so kind and helpful um, to talk to me and talk to their talk about their business to me um, and how they got started. And just knowing that we're all going to specialize kind of in different um, spaces and, and people are going to, our clients are going to get along with different people. So um, yeah, I love that. It's just, I feel like there's space. There's enough space for everyone. You never know who you could be introduced to. And that's the beauty of it. And and that's what I like. And I think I said to you in an email that um, God puts certain people in your life for a reason. And I firmly believe that. And you just never know. I mean, you just never know. So let's uh, go back to (laughs) Kelly before Kelly, the female entrepreneur and the small business owner. Talk to me about, well, first of all, anyone listening from the St. Louis area, she went to Parkway West High School, just so you know. (laughs) And then she went to Missouri State University in Springfield, Missouri, which, um, Missouri State, it used to be called Southwest Missouri State. So either one of those. But you're from the area, you live here, and your ha- your major in college was housing and interior design, but you were working in the corporate world. So let's talk about that and what has led to you where you are today. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, I was working um, for many years as a legal recruiter um, at a couple of different law firms. Completely and different I, than what you're doing now. <laughs> completely different. <laughs> um, so then I had my daughter about two years ago, and I just realized that I really wanted more flexibility, like more work-life balance. I wanted to spend some more time with her. Um, and then I, I I loved what I was, I, I loved my job. I loved the people there the most, I would say. I, I didn't feel passionate about what I was doing necessarily, but it was a great place to work, good benefits and all of that. But I really just um, felt like I wanted to switch to something that I really enjoyed doing. So that's when I um, kind of started to do some soul searching and researching and came across um, professional organizing. And I thought, oh, well, I love organizing. I love interior design. They kind of go hand in hand. Um, And then I ended up reaching out to the president of the NAPO St. Louis chapter, who I had coffee with. And then I went to one of their meetings. And then after that, it was pretty much a done deal. I knew that it's what I wanted to do. Um, And as I said, everyone in that organization just has been super helpful. Um, I've been, I've worked with some of the other members on some organizing jobs as well. Um, So that's been so great. So, um, so yeah, I've been doing it for about a year now and um, I'm, I'm loving it. Well, I'm going to have to ask the question about the pandemic. So 
you formed in October of 2019. And so you weren't in business too, too long. And then, you know, this wonderful pandemic that we have uh, happening, you go into people's homes. So how challenging has that been for you? Right. Um, So at the beginning, my business pretty much completely stopped um, for, like during quarantine and for the next couple of months. Um, I did during that time do a couple of virtual organizing sessions where I helped clients um, do so they would do the organizing on their own, but I would be there to kind of guide them in the right direction. I would still send product recommendations. Um, so I did do some of the virtual organizing. And then lately over the last couple of months, it has been picking up. Um, I do wear a mask in all of my clients' homes and just make sure that I am not showing any symptoms and vice versa with the clients. Well, I was going to say that probably during quarantine and all of that, people were like, oh, I need to get myself organized (laughs) and started probably trying to do things on their own. They're like, nope, I can't do this. (laughs) Right. Yes. And I think that that's what I'm seeing now is um, a lot of people over the last couple of months have been having all of these ideas and now they're reaching out to me to kind of put everything in. <laughs> You're like, I will clean up your mess for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I really am interested actually in learning a little bit more about NAPO because I, I actually didn't know, I don't know a lot about them and just how that's been working for you. And, and, you know, especially if someone's listening and they're like, oh, that might be a a good thing for me to get involved in. Right. Oh, definitely. Um, So yeah, so they have a national chapter um, and you have to be a member of the national chapter to be also a member of the St. Louis chapter. We have monthly meetings and right now, of course, they're all virtual. So yeah, it's just a great organization of other productivity and organizing specialists. And um, it's just, as I said, it's been a great resource for me. I've learned so much through so many of the different women there. Are there like mentors within there or coaches of some sort? Yes, they do. Yes, they, they do have a mentoring program um, for any new members that come in. So you can definitely. Um, okay. And then I'll have a link in the show notes at jilldevine.com with more information on that if you are interested in learning more. One thing that I have been told a lot by other entrepreneurs is it is worth the investment to get into a program like that or an organization like NAPO or to invest in a coach or an advisor. Because I've been told that that's where a lot of people learn pretty much everything about their business. And and of course, you want to make sure it's the right fit for you. And I remember one time listening to a podcast and this woman was talking about the mentor that she had been using and how much he cost. And I was like, what? I mean, I don't think I could go that route, but she did say like, if this might not be your thing right now, but definitely put it on your to-do, invest in someone who's going to help you invest in yourself and ultimately help you flourish. Yes. And I completely agree with that. Um, I, yeah, through the mentoring program, through NAPO, I've learned so much. They also have NAPO University where you can take courses on professional organizing. Um, So I've taken advantage of that as well. So yes, I would definitely say that it is a great resource and definitely worth the investment. Okay, so we are going to talk about organized interiors in just a minute. But first, I want to talk about your daughter, your daughter, Carly, also born in December. So she will be two coming up in not not a long time. When's her birthday? Right. Her birthday is actually Christmas Eve. Oh, yes. I remember us talking about this. Yes. So our daughters are 10 days apart. Ah. (laughs) Yeah. So what um, what are you feeling as a first time mom and your thoughts on on that and combining the work situation? Yeah. um, I mean, I love being a mom. It's the best thing ever. She is, as I'm sure you know, in the stage where she's just running all over the place right Uh now. Yep. She's a little hard to keep up with, (laughs) Um, but it's, it's so great. And, and yeah, like having my business 
It is. So it is a lot of work. Like I feel like I'm always working. Like anytime I, I have a chance, like when she's napping or after we put her down for bed, I'm working on my business. Um, but it's, it's also something that I enjoy so much that it's different than when I was in the corporate world. So um, I still get a lot of balance with her and with my business. So it's, I, I love it. I am, I'm so glad that I made this decision. Ah, oh, that's what I love to hear. I love that. I mean, that, you know, when you start to go, what did I do? What did I do to myself and to my family? Right. <laughs> and it is, it's hard work, but I think when you enjoy something, it doesn't always feel like work. Right. Because like you said, it's what you want to do. And exactly. it's, yeah. I mean, I always joke around that I could never be a stay-at-home mom. I, I, I mean, and I, I am actually still feeling this, I don't know if it's carrying over from the amount of time that we were home together, mm -hmm. that I still feel like I haven't fulfilled my bucket, if that if that makes sense. Like, I, I sometimes wonder, am I, do I have such a short fuse because I haven't had enough time to to fill myself up um, because we have had so much time together. And right. I know some people are like, uh, that's a bad thing. Well, let me tell you, when your child is constantly pushing you and um, I, I'm just the, I am just the type of person who has to have my stuff happening. Like I know a lot of women who that was, that was what they wanted in their life. They wanted kids and that is fantastic. Right. Oh yeah. I am so blessed and grateful for my children, but for me to be the best mom and the best version of myself, I have to have something else, my career yeah. to fill me up. Yes, I completely agree. I think stay-at-home moms are superheroes. <laughs> yes. Um, but I, I, I feel the same as you. I, I really like having something that I can focus on for myself um, and then also get that time with my daughter that I need. Yeah, it just makes me a happier person. And mm -hmm. listen, if mama's yeah. happy, everybody's happy. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Let's go back to my love language, my made up love language of organization. So okay. <laughs> you have organized interiors. You said some of your favorite things to organize are play areas and pantries. And I was like, well, come on over. <laughs> what do you, you can organize everything. So that's the thing with me is like, I love organization. And when you see most of the things in my house are pretty organized, but there are some things that just, it, it just gets lost. And right. for those, there's a lot of people that I know don't really care about organization at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, for my brain, when things are unorganized, it's chaos. It creates um, anxiety and right. it just, it, 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 it can spiral me into a place that I, I don't want to be. Right. Definitely. And I think that those two areas are probably my favorite because we spend so much our time of our time in those areas. So we're in our kitchens all the time if we're at home. Yep. <laughs> um, so making that space functional um, is just so important to me to help my clients so that they are not feeling that anxiety. So walk me through. I, I mean, I know you and I already met and you came through and talked to me and and obviously no surprise here. I talked to Kelly's ear off about everything. <laughs> Kelly, you're probably like, okay, I'm ready to go. Um, and that's what Kelly's great. She'll let you just talk, 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 but walk the listener through like how you go about trying to decide what's the best thing for them and what they need to benefit from organization. Yeah. Um, so the first part of my process is the initial assessment that I have with my clients, and that can be done in person or virtually. And during that time, we I take a look at the space, and then we also discuss the client's goals. So um, for me to hear the client's goals, that's really going to help me determine the best plan to put together for that particular client that's going to be functional for their family. Um, so that's where I start with everything. Um, 
sometimes if the client is interested in adding products or they might have existing products to use, that can really help um, a space. So for instance, in a pantry, we might want to group all of the like items together and that's going to be helpful so that they're not searching their entire pantry to find something for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, so it really just depends on the client's goals and the particular space that we're working with. Something that you and I talked about when you were over here with um, different organization opportunities like totes and mm -hmm. baskets and all that stuff. You and I were like, man, is there a small business around that focuses just on those things? And we couldn't really think of it. And so right. this is my my call is if you are a small business and you have those kinds of things that are perfect for organization, baskets, mm -hmm. containers, bins, whatever it may be, you should definitely team up with Kelly because you would recommend those items to be purchased by people like me. Oh, definitely. And I would love to support a local business. That would be great. Yeah. So we would love for you, if you know of one, or if you do have one, you can email me hello at jilldevine.com. I'll put you in contact with Kelly and we'll go from there. All right. So if someone is wanting to do a Zoom, how does that look? Yeah, so for the assessment, um, it would be pretty simple and quick. We would just you would just show me um, the space that you're interested in getting organized, and then we would discuss your goals virtually. And I would be able to email you after that um, with a plan, and then we can schedule our session. Um, if we do the full session virtually, um, it would it so we would still do the initial assessment, and then I would for the actual organizing session, I would just be on video with you and kind of walk you through each step. Um, so, so for instance, typically, um, so we'll use a pantry as an example, I would have you take everything out of the space, we would kind of sort into categories, use the products that we have to contain the items and then put everything back in um, the way that we'd like to and with the plan that I've come up with. Uh, when you talk about how you majored in this in college, is there <laughs> a course or something that accompanies it about the psychological side of organization? Hmm. So not in college that, so I did housing and interior design in college. Not that I can remember. <laughs> it was a while back, but, um, but as I mentioned through NAPO university, they definitely have courses that focus on that as well. Okay. So have you taken any of those? I'm just interested in like, the thought process and the brain and how it, it kind of right. groups things together. How, you know what I mean? Right. And how everyone can kind of think in a different way. Um, yes. That, and yeah. benefit from it. Right. For sure. Um, so I haven't taken a course that focuses mainly on that, but they do talk about it in lo a lot of the courses. Um, so I think that that just has to do with kind of getting to know your client and getting to know their lifestyle, their daily routines and what makes sense to them. So in each space, I'm wanting to make sure that I'm doing what makes sense to them as, a, as opposed to what makes sense to me. Oh, okay. Okay. Cause I, I could see that if you have like, okay, always go in this order with colors. I don't even know right. what I'm talking about, but like that might work for you, but not for right, me. So it, yeah. And it might work for one client, but not the next. Oh, yeah. There's a lot more to organization than meets the eye. Yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, then I, I wanted to get your thoughts on being a small business owner and the grit and the determination mm -hmm. for the advice that you might have for someone who is thinking about either getting into the type of business you do or another business. Yeah. Um, so I would say like, if it is something that you feel passionately about, I would say to do it and jump in because it kind of took me a while to do that. And I would get advice from other people saying, you need to just go for it. And then once I did, I was so happy that I did. Um, and, and reaching out to people as we were talking about mentors, like if you find someone who you think, um, if you're interested in their business and learning more about it, you would be surprised at how many people are willing to share and willing to talk to you about their businesses. Um, so I would definitely recommend that. And I will, I'll probably put words in your mouth, but I want to <laughs> say that maybe something else, it, it, don't be afraid to reach out to people and just say, 
hey, here's who I am. Right. And I would love to just talk. Yeah, definitely. I've done that so many times and um, I get great responses. So it's it's really good. Yeah, there's just this wonderful movement that I feel is happening now with women supporting women and showing other women that you can have choices and you can do this and you can just ask for help. You can also just put yourself out there. Right. Definitely. I couldn't agree more. All right. If individuals are going to use your services, how should they get a hold of you? So they can go to my website and it's organizedinteriorsstl.com. Um, and there is a little information form that they can submit through the website. They could also just email me directly. And my email address is kelly at organizedinteriorsstl.com. Something else I, I want to bring up before I let you go is when Kelly and I did talk, we started just talking about all these different ideas when it comes to organization, that it's not just putting things together in your pantry or organizing the toys. We started talking about things like holidays and which are quickly approaching and um, how to do these teachable moments with your kids on certain things with toys. And so while I am making a big tease here now, I just want to tell you to make sure you check back to jilldevine.com and also on all the social medias because we're going to team up and provide some really awesome information for individuals who could really benefit from that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we're also going to give you the opportunity to get uh, three hours of free service from Kelly when you purchase three hours. And we'll talk about all that because I want you to see the work. And I know Kelly wants you to see the work as well, but all of this really good stuff. It's like I needed an organization guru (laughs) to be a part of this. And you sent email and now look at us. Right. It's so great. (laughs) Well, I cannot wait to introduce you to some more people. I can't wait for you to come get us organized over here. And yeah, we'll definitely make sure the listener knows how to reach you. Where can they find you on social media? Is it uh, just Instagram? Um, Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Organized Interiors, and then it's underscore STL. And I, again, will have all of that linked up in the show notes at JillDevine.com. And again, that's also where you will find how you can contact Kelly and any other additional information. Well, I want to thank you for sending that initial email and I can't wait to continue to get to know you more and work with you and learn all the tips and tricks. (laughs) Definitely me too. And thank you so much. Before I get to the super mom shout out, I want to talk about blonde and real estate because I love that they go beyond just offering you a wonderful house. I mean, that's their bread and butter and what they do, but they also give you useful tips, expert advice, the latest news with real estate. All of this comes in their weekly blog. I mean, little things like, oh, think about this when you're packing up your kitchen. It's just different tips to help you and make life easier. See what I'm talking about by visiting blondinrealestate.com. We have reached that point in the episode where it's time to shout out a super mom. Michelle is nominating her friend Allison from O'Fallon, Missouri. She says, Allison is a single super mom. She has two daughters, Nora, age five, and Natalie, age one. Allison is a treasury manager for RGA and balances a very stressful job and two adorable little girls. When Natalie was born, Allison became a single mother. While it was difficult, she rose above the challenges and is a rock star. She takes Nora to dance every week, schedules creative and playtime for both girls, makes time for family dinner every Sunday with her parents, brother, and nephews, while continuing to be a strong leader at her office. She is the best girlfriend who offers sound advice and is a great listener. She makes it look so easy, and I am so proud of her. She is a wonderful mother, girlfriend, daughter, and sister. Allison, I see you, and I support you. 
if you would like to nominate a mom, a super mom that is, for the super mom shout out, all you have to do is email me, hello at jilldevine.com. I just need her name, where she's from, and why you're nominating her. And if you could do me a favor and follow me on Instagram at Jill Devine, you can also stay up to date by visiting jilldevine.com. And lastly, I will ask you to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening, because when you subscribe, that means you won't miss an episode and you'll always be in the know. Thank you for your support and for listening to Two Kids and a Career.